This is partly a TED Talk and partly a public declaration of queer love. This is my girlfriend, Alessia, and me. We are kissing in front of St. Peter's Basilica, one of the key landmarks in the Italian and global Christian landscape. Right where the obelisk lines up with the dome, we call that kissing point, and we kiss there often. When I come to stay in this city, we live right around the corner. So St. Peter's Square has really become a home for us. And this has become a beloved tradition of ours, kissing as an openly queer couple in a space that means so much to us, but continues to exclude us. We have become very accustomed to some of the most common reactions, including, think of the children. You must repent for that. And why do you care so much? Things are getting better anyways. Alessia and I are not interested in waiting for the world to become more welcoming for us. We are not interested in atoning for this supposed sin. We want to bathe in this sin. We want to soak it up. We want to taste it. We want to hold it in our arms whenever and wherever we want. Inevitably, we sometimes don't go unnoticed. But this is our goal. We spend much of our lives as invisible. Sometimes we masquerade as straight friends to maintain our own safety. Sometimes, despite our best efforts to be seen, we are made out to be deplorable and unnatural by certain people, institutions, and ideologies that surround us. It's not easy for us. So we've made our own little form of protest, one that serves the both of us and brings us both much happiness. But it is far from the first to have taken place within this very space. People have run nude through St. Peter's Basilica. People have demonstrated for the right of women to enter into the priesthood in the middle of the square. And LGBTQIA activists have brought much color to the square with pride flags. And there is one protester who has had a particular impact on my life, one that Alessia and I try to pay homage to every time we kiss in this square, and that is Alfredo Ormando. On January 13th, 1998, Ormando set himself on fire in St. Peter's Square as Pope John Paul II was speaking to a crowd. And Ormando, a gay man, did this as an act of protest against the church's denunciation of homosexuality. He died 11 days later in the hospital at 39 years old. Despite Ormando's tragic death, his story has gone largely forgotten in history, but his memory is honored by the Italian queer community. During a gap year that I took in Italy about two years ago after high school, I watched this community make itself visible. I watched it occupy spaces as its very own, using kissing as a tool of protest, one that is immediately recognizable. And this image of the queer kiss, it became so powerful, and especially within an Italian context, so shocking that it immediately caught on as a key image and part of this key slogan. So hashtag lo stesso bacio, meaning the same kiss. And our kisses, whether romantic or friendly pecks on the cheek, they showed up in newspapers across the country, garnering a really exciting amount of attention. But at this particular protest, I did not kiss my girlfriend, Alessia. And I didn't kiss her because I hadn't yet found the courage to have an entire conversation with her. Our story which I would really love to share with you all, was very much just beginning. I met Alessia at the aptly named Gay Center in Rome during a meeting for queer youth. When I first saw her, we were doing a kind of warm-up exercise. We were instructed to pretend to be trees, to extend our arms to the side like branches, close our eyes, and feel our legs sturdy and grounded. So there I was in a foreign country, surrounded by people speaking a language I wasn't yet familiar with, pretending to be a tree, squinting my eyes, and staring at the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. 
And today, when I look at her in person or over Skype, I'm just as overwhelmed. But we almost missed our opportunity because we're both very shy. When we finally found the courage to spend some time, just the two of us, I found the words, so what's going on between us, come tumbling out of my mouth. And she kissed me. And it was the most intense kiss I've ever experienced. And from that moment forward, all I wanted to do was kiss this girl, from San Pietro to Pigneto, from the ruins at Ostia Antica to the Forum and the Colosseum, I wanted to kiss her. And I wanted to fall in love on my own terms and show the entire city that I was falling in love for the very first time. But we are not a straight couple, so it was not so simple. At a concert we attended, a group of young men approached us and started breathily asking questions into my ear, such as, how can such a feminine girl be gay? And are you 100% lesbian? One of them asked us to kiss in front of him, a gross attempt at reappropriating our own intimate form of expressing our love. Another time on the way to picnic in a nearby park, we stopped by a cafe to pick up some sandwiches. And at this cafe, right by my home, I had come to be really friendly with one of the waiters there. But this day, when we walked in, he took one look at Alessia and said to me, confused, who is this? This is my girlfriend, I said. And he paused and said, are you sure? We have countless stories like this, and none of them were easy to experience. Um, so we had to face, face the facts. Face the facts that in this city, there are people that want to prove that our love isn't authentic. In this city, we are not only unwelcome, we are actively excluded. So the question became, how do we do this on our own terms? How do we make visible what existed previously only behind closed doors or in our own interiorities? How do we emerge from a whole history of repression and assert a relationship as our very own? How do we find a way to belong in spaces that exclude us? This is really complicated. And I am sure every queer individual knows that, that it's hard and it's scary. Um, so it's really important to recognize that we were so hugely privileged to be able to safely protest in Rome. And there's a lot to protest about. My gap year in Rome happened to coincide with a hugely important year in the history of LGBTQIA rights in Italy. Monica Cirina, a Democratic senator, penned a bill on the right of same-sex couples to enter into civil unions. Not marriage, civil unions. The bill did eventually pass in February of 2016, but only after countless negotiations and changes, including the removal of the right of same-sex couples to adopt children. All in all, it was a huge disappointment. But in the time leading up to the vote, the community protested and demonstrated almost every week. And I was really lucky to be able to participate. And on Valentine's Day, we took our proud, unapologetic selves to the Pantheon, and we celebrated love. Bachi, we're given out bachi candies, bachi meaning kisses. And we took part in a big celebration. Some people chose to kiss, some chose to express their love. In other ways, there is no one right way to express love. So in front of this Roman temple turned church built two millennia ago, one of the most recognizable landmarks in the city, we stood and demanded that our history be recognized as just as important. And on March 5th, we took to Piazza del Popolo. In the months leading up to the vote, these demonstrations were happening across the entire country and across the world. But on that day, people congregated in Rome for a huge demonstration, for performances, and for appearances from Italian celebrities. It was really exciting. So in the square known as the People's Square, we stood and we demanded to be seen as just that, as people. And then, of course, there's St. Peter's Square, a space that has been used by so many queer activists to demonstrate for our rights, 
yet one that continues to be incredibly exclusive. My gap year also happened to coincide with a really important year in the history of this very square. Pope Francis called 2016 to be a jubilee year, also known as the Year of Mercy, and many made pilgrimage to Rome. About four million tourists total came to the city that year. And they poured into that square every week to look up in awe at Pope Francis as he emerged from his window in the Vatican to give mass. And they waved and cheered and held up banners. It was always so overwhelming. I'm always overwhelmed when I'm in that space, overwhelmed by the power of religion and community and love, but I'm also overwhelmed by an inescapable fear that in this space that means so much to me, I am not welcome to be entirely who I am. Legally, I just don't belong in, in these spaces. St. Peter's Square is technically under Vatican jurisdiction, but nevertheless, the two places are, of course, deeply connected. And legality aside, many, including the curators of the space, have made it clear that we are not welcome. Using language such as homosexual tendencies, the church's official stance on queer identities is hard to swallow. In the eyes of the church, the church that I was baptized into, we are morally unjustifiable. It is written in the catechism that our identities cannot be explained. And according to Joseph Ratzinger, we take part in an intrinsically bad behavior, one that is objectively disorderly. Ratzinger would go on to become Pope Benedict XVI and of course have tremendous influence in the country. And Pope Francis, the current Pope, he once famously said, who am I to judge? A moment that gave so many of us hope. But disappointingly, soon after, argued that there is an undeniable difference between heterosexual and homosexual couples. He also reaffirmed the church's rule that openly queer men cannot enter the priesthood. Francis is lauded as a progressive, queer-friendly pope, but toleration if we can even call this toleration, is not nearly enough, and it is certainly not justice for people like Alfredo Armando. We want to be able to take part in this world through our own definitions, not through definitions placed upon us by others, by institutions that surround us. We want the same kind of accessibility and safety and comfort and freedom afforded to straight individuals within these spaces. But we're not, so we kiss. And the thing is, we're kissing in these, these incredible spaces that were built for each and every one of us. They are a great human inheritance and they belong to all of us. When Bernini was designing the colonnade for St. Peter's Square, he wanted everyone inside the square to feel like they were being embraced by warm, loving arms. So when Alessia and I kiss, we remind ourselves of that fact. And when we kiss, we get stares and sometimes comments. When we kiss, we become the center of unwanted questioning and confusion and hatred. But then we kiss, and that kiss has never changed. And at the very least, that kiss has shown up in many a tourist photo. And I have to say, it gives me great pleasure knowing that people are returning home with these photos to remember the Vatican by that are decorated with queer love. A couple days ago, a friend asked me as I was telling him about this talk, if there were one thing I could say to the members of the Vatican, the cardinals, the bishops, the Pope, even the Swiss guards, what would it be? Um, there are a lot of things. <laughs> but um, I would certainly say that our love is the same love that you teach in scripture. It's the same love that is celebrated in scripture. The same love felt in prayer and sung in hymns. It is a love that deserves to be broadcast on TV and hung up on banners, written into law as equal and celebrated in your churches. Um, but it is not. So until then, you can look forward to a lot of queer kissing in your square. 
Thank you so much.